Hi, my name's Danielle, but my friends call me Danny. I love watching knitting and spinning podcasts, and I thought that I would like to share some of my creations and my thoughts on crafting with the interwebs. <laughs> um, I can be found on Ravelry as Danny Girl CO uh, for Colorado and also Danny Girl CO on Instagram. I'm a little nervous. This is like my third try. <laughs> um, I thought this first episode I would use to tell you a little about, about myself and my crafting exploits and um, some other hobbies that I enjoy keeping up with. Um, I live in Colorado, obviously, in the uh, high plains, edge of the desert, edge of the grassland, edge of the mountains. Uh, region. So we get crazy weather and a little bit of the best of all the worlds and some of the worst of all the worlds um, as far as weather goes. Um, I started knitting and crocheting when I was in college, which was about 15, 20 years ago now. And um, I needed something cheap for Christmas presents for everybody, so I learned how to crochet and made everybody snowflake ornaments. You know, the, uh, the original doily. <laughs> um, I learned how to knit, too, but all, all I really got done was a scarf or two, and then I set it aside for many years, um, during which I took up quilting and uh, some other sewing crafts and I still quilt and I still crochet every now and then mostly just baby blankets um, but knitting is my real passion now about four years ago I got back into it and uh, joined a knitting group in town and they've become a wonderful group of friends and ladies to hang out with every week and I wanted to see if I could expand that circle of knitting friends and um, everybody seems to have so much fun getting feedback and, and emails and, and and joy from podcasting and sharing their uh, their creations that I thought I would give it a try and see how things went. <laughs> um, let's just start at the beginning with knitting. Um, I thought I'd show you every episode, uh, one of my previous finished objects, um, just so you can get an idea of my taste and my style and my knitting skills, which are intermediate at best. <laughs> but one of my goals is to try a new technique with every project I work on and I have been pretty good about trying accomplishing that and so let's give it a look. This is my Eden Prairie Shawl by Nancy Whitman. Oh it's big. I'm not sure if you can see it all. It's supposed to look like a stained glass window uh, and it's in the kind of arts and crafts style. Um, I love Nancy Whitman's patterns. I love her shawls and this one is just a huge squishy garter stitch shawl and um, I did several new techniques in this one. I did mitered squares um, for the center square, center diamonds, I did a mitered square technique, and I also did 
Uh, I'm not sure if you can see. Maybe the green is easier to see than the blue. Um, a modified intarsia technique in the border where the gray lines that are supposed to look like glass letting go through the, the border. Modified intarsia technique where you uh, wrap, wrap your uh, yarn and switch to the other color. Um, I did this as a knit along and of course I did not make <laughs> the deadline along with everybody else. Part of that had to do with the fact that I added an extra um, stripe, series of stripes and a diamond to it because I wanted a big squishy shawl and that's what I've got. I love how big this shawl is. I love that it's just nice and squishy. Yes, it's a triangular shawl, so I have the the point pointing at your butt, <laughs> but it's so big that it kind of goes goes low enough that it I don't mind. And it's just wonderful to wrap around and snuggle up in. So that's one of my previous finished objects. Um, one of my current whips um, that I want to go over with you. I'm just going to show whips that I've actually worked on in the last week or two. Um, one of them is called uh, Crossover Tank. Hmm. And the pattern is by Crossover Top. I am not sure who the pattern is by. It's a free pattern on Ravelry through favecrafts.com. Who knows? Um, but this is the front, the bottom. So it's done in sections and then you piece it together and I'm fine because I'm doing this in 100% cotton. Um, I love the yarn. Um, it's so soft and it doesn't hurt my hands to work with at all. It is, hold on, Universal Yarn Ink Cotton Supreme Splash. And it is so soft, it's amazing. So, as I said, this is done in pieces. This is the bottom front. You can see it has a lace panel section, a garter ridge bottom, and then a garter ridge. This is where the um, Empire Waist goes. So that's the front. This is the back where it's got the bottom lace panel, the garter ridge for the umpire waist, and a stockinette section with a neck and armhole shaping. And can I say I love interchangeables because this is supposed to be a put on waist yarn. I just kept it on my cable. Love it. So easy to just put, take your needles off and put your cable cap on and go on to the next piece, which is the cable crossover top on it now. So this is what I've been working on this week. And this is the left front section. So ha, literally this is what crosses over your top. Left front and then you'll have a right front. Two, two sides will cross over and connect up at the shoulder and the armholes. So I'm almost done. Um, I've been working on that um, for a couple months now. I start and stop and stall out. Um, another project I've been working on is a pair of socks, Hermione's Everyday Socks. Um, and I'm making these for my mother. I have a hoe. And I actually did the pattern as written with the heel 
Um, and, oh, I can't remember what sock this is out of, but I got it at Joanne's. It's a super wash something. And I am just turned the heel on the second sock and just have the foot to do. And these socks are going to be for my mom because she loves hand-knit socks. I gave her a pair for Christmas last year and because they were too big for me. <laughs> and they fit her and she loved them and said she wears them all the time, which made me very excited. So she is knit-worthy enough to get an, another pair of hand-knit socks. Um, I actually have another pair of socks going. Yes. Why? Because they're small and portable. And I'm easily um, bored. So why not have another pair of socks going? These I'm doing... Oh, I'm d I did those Magic Loop on my Addy lace. And I'm doing these two at a time on my Addy Sock Rockets in a size one and a half US, maybe. And these are the Atlantic Current Socks by, oh my goodness, I stink at getting pattern designer names. I will have it in the show notes. Um, so these are the Atlantic Current Socks. I'm doing two at a time. And I love this yarn. It's from Jinx Yarns. It is her Glitz Sock in the colorway Ponyo Number no. 1. Oh, focus. I am working on getting my lighting and a place to do, but I just wanted to see how this go goes first before I invest more <laughs> into, you know, stuff for podcasting. But this is the yarn, and I don't know if you can see the glitz in it. But it's blues, all shades of blues and white, and it's beautiful. I'm doing these two at a time. And I am almost ready to start the heel, but not quite. And the pattern's just a three row repeat, and it's very easy to memorize. Okay, so those are um, some of my whips, and certainly not all of them. I figure every week I'll go through a few more so you get to see everything that I have in progress. Um, moving on to spinning. If I get really fancy, I'll come up with segment names for things. Like, um, I love In a Snit. It's one of my favorite video podcasts and how they have the faux show and in a snit and uh, snit we love and I just I love the way their segments work in with their uh, name. I'm not that creative yet so I'll think about it for a while and see what I can come up with. If you have any hints, recommendations, suggestions, please comment. Um, spinning. What I am working on right now Yes, people, I have a loop bat. I got this a couple months ago, and I have just recently this week started spinning it. It goes from a very dark juniper green to a lighter green to a spring green to a yellow to a pale orange to a golden copper, golden copper russet kind of color. I love it. Love it. Um, I have a Lendrum spinning wheel, and that's what I'm spinning my loop bat on. Um, I do have drop spindles, and I also have hmm, one supported spindle that I'm still kind of figuring out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, for big projects, or something that I want to do continue in a continuous 
uh, single as much as I can get. I spin on my Lundrum. Um, my theory with this loop bat is to, that's my dog, sorry, is to spin it into one long single and then chain fly it um, to keep the color progression as it goes and then to knit a uh, grade eight shawl with it. So that's my hope. I do have a plan in place. Sometimes I spin without a plan and just spin to spin. And sometimes I know what I want to do and I try to achieve it, but I've only been spinning about two years, three years now. Come here, Willow. Um, and so still don't necessarily end up with what I want to get. Um, if you've heard the barking in the background, that's my puppy. Her name is Willow, and she's an English Springer Spaniel. She's our second dog. Um, and she gets jealous if you're talking to somebody other than her. Yes. Do you want to be in the podcast, Willow? Willow, cuddle. You want up? Cuddle. No? Let's go down and show you. Yes. So this is Willow. Say hi. She's a, not a pocket dog, but definitely a foot warmer. <laughs> um, and, sorry, I get distracted. Um, one of my hobbies involves training dogs, so I'll talk about that later. Um, spinning. Sometimes I get what I wanted and was going for and sometimes I don't and sometimes I don't have a plan. Um, one of my finished spinning projects is this yarn. It's a two-ply. I spun it from two equal bats. Uh, And so I spun each bat separately and then plied them together. And there's turquoise and blue and orange, and I call it my Colorado sunset. Um, I don't know if you can see the color. Oh, there we go. That is pretty darn good color representation. And as you can see, I didn't spin very evenly. There's kind of some thick and thin sections, um, and that's okay. I am thinking I'm just going to do a cowl or a hat with this. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how much yardage I have. I think somewhere between 250 and 300 yards. Um, but not quite sure. I didn't count my wraps on my Nitty Naughty. Oops. And so I'm just going to wing it. And again, um, I'm very happy with the result. I like the barber pulling. I, I was intending to get the barber pulling in this um, instance, uh, which I don't always like and don't always want to go for. But in this instance, I did because I wanted the colors to blend that way. So that's my knitting and spinning. Um, I don't have any sewing to talk about this time, other than the fact that I do quilt and I um, do some sewing, not so much daily wear clothing, more costume-ish type. Um, I did want to just briefly touch on some of my other hobbies. My sister tends to call me the schizophrenic hobbyist because I have my fingers in so many pies. Um, I mentioned earlier that I enjoy training dogs. I trained our first dog 
um, spent a lot of time with her and worked on training her. She also was an English Springer Spaniel and we did take her bird hunting. Um, I'd never had a dog before. I didn't know what I was doing. I read tons of books on the subject and the best one was the Rough Shooter's Guide um, that my father-in-law gave me. And so I took what I could from there and trained my dog. Um, I didn't ruin her too much. Her instincts kicked in and she ended up being great for the purposes that we wanted her for, you know, hunting three, four days a year and house dog the rest. Um, with Willow, we haven't really worked on birds yet. She doesn't have, she's a year old. She doesn't have that toy retrieve drive that our first dog did, so we're not sure how she'll do once we take her bird hunting. We're hoping her instincts kick in. Um, and I haven't spent as much time with her, but I do enjoy um, working with her on obedience and and other skills. Um, I also volunteer at our local Humane Society um, as a enrichment canine enrichment specialist. Basically, means I give Kong treats filled with peanut butter to the dogs <laughs> um, or PVC puzzles or so they're like PVC tubes with end caps on them with holes drilled in and you put treats inside and they have to toss them around to get the treats out. Um, basically just activities to try and keep them from being bored while they're in the kennels waiting to be adopted. I volunteer two hours a week, every week, um, and it's a minimum six month commitment. And so far I'm enjoying that and I'm considering um, when a position for matchmaker comes available, I thought I'd like to do that. And that's where you match um, dogs up with prospective families. Um, and I'd like to do that. Uh, I'd like to spend more time getting to know the dogs. So. Um, what else? I'm also a beekeeper. <laughs> I have one hive currently. It was alive at the beginning of May. It was, uh, filling up a single brood box. And so I added a, a second empty box onto it on top so that they had room to build up and didn't swarm. And then we've had three weeks of rain straight, literally almost every day and like four inches in one week. Um, so I don't know how my bees are doing. It's kind of a swamp out there right now where they're located and I haven't gone out to check on them. They haven't had any supplemental feed um, because I'm trying to do it with as least intervention as possible. And uh, I hope they're alive. <laughs> um, I've been beekeeping for three years now. Four? Three? Um, at one point I had four hives. Some of them don't survive. They don't last the winter. It's Colorado. It gets cold. Um, so I'm back down to one. I have friends who do beekeeping with me and, um, they're considering getting out of it and might possibly give me their hive. So I'll be back up to two. I also, um, am set up to collect swarms and do cutouts. But I haven't really felt up to it this year, so I've been turning down any phone calls that I've received. <coughs> That's the dog. Sorry. Um, and I don't really have my equipment set up to handle another hive at this time, so I just pass those on to our local beekeeping association and let them handle it. Um, 
hopefully I will get back into collecting swarms because one, you know they're survivors, and two, it's freebies. So hopefully. Um, in future episodes, I will talk about why I believe beekeeping is so important, um, especially local, um, urban beekeeping, um, and why I choose to do natural hive management, and um, Just discuss the problems that bees have been facing over the past decade and uh, beekeeping in general and honey sales and uh, natural honey versus uh, artificially produced honey and honey from China. So I'll talk about that in a future episode and get into more depth if anybody's interested. Um, I know it kind of feels a little all over the place, um, but I figure I can tag the segments and people can fast forward if they'd like to, if they're not interested in a particular segment. And I also figure um, other knitting and spinning podcasts talk about other things. Some people do book reviews and spend a lot of time discussing that, um, you know, book reviews that aren't necessarily about knitting um, or spinning um, but just for the pleasure of reading so I figure if they can do that I can uh, talk about beekeeping or some of my other hobbies who knows maybe somebody's interested um, and it's all kind of part of the same thing um, self-sufficiency and homemade projects I guess handmade projects. Although the bees make the honey, it's still what I consider uh, homemade. Um, sorry. I think that's all I have for the moment um, as far as episode one goes. Um, you can find the show notes at myhighplaneslife.blogspot.com and you can find episode one located on my YouTube channel, Danny Girl CO, and hopefully I'll get this up on iTunes. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.